right, guys, time for the family segment. Uh, what you need to teach your kids about money, credit, finance. We always say this, uh, whether we're, you know, on a stage in event across the country or we're talking with one of our uh, strategic partners, we say, listen, I don't know about you, but no one taught me about credit, money, finance in school like it just wasn't taught. And my oldest, you know, just graduated from high school, finished his first year at the University of Utah. And while they can be really great at teaching engineering and calculus and all sorts of complicated stuff, they don't actually teach money, finance, credit, and they don't teach sales either, which I find very yeah. disturbing. So let's let's talk about some of the important things that you should be teaching your children that your school is probably not. Number one, good debt versus bad debt. Like how would you, you know, classify good debt versus bad debt? Good debt would be taking on debt with an expectation, an educated expectation of a greater return. Bad debt would be taking on debt with no expectation of a greater return, right? A TV. If you're going to go into debt to get a TV, that is bad debt. There's no expectation of a greater return. You're not going to charge your friends 10 bucks an hour to come watch your TV. That's a very bad debt. A good debt, taking on debt with an educated expectation of a greater return, starting something like an Amazon business, Starting a, a side hustle as a, a loan broker, right? Whatever that may be, that would be considered a good debt, in my opinion. Now, for a lot of young kids out there, there's this big question of, well, hey, I'm going to get student loans. That's a great investment in my future. Getting that student loan is going to allow me to get that college degree and that MBA, and it's going to really pay off big time. And uh, one of my mentors, uh, interesting guy again, uh, Alex, uh, that we've been uh, following here, he actually was accepted into Harvard into their MBA program. And he had money saved up, and he looked at how much he was going to take out in student loans, multiple six figures, and he's like, it's going to take, you know, three or four years, cost yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars, and afterwards, you know, I, I have a good opportunity to get a good job somewhere, or I can start a business, start my own gym, and I think in the next few years, I'm going to be further ahead, have no student loan debt, and be making a lot more money and get wealthy quicker. So that was the bet he made. And he left uh, Baltimore, didn't go to Harvard, went down to California and uh, started his first gym. And uh, fast forward a few years later, and yeah, he's now worth $100 million. And he's learned and he's grown and he's found mentors and he's invested in himself. And uh, he avoided all that student loan debt. And so for people looking at, well, should I go to college and get that student loan? Well, you better do your homework. I mean, even if you're going to be a, a doctor, uh, like my brother uh, went to Ohio State Medical School, but I mean, that's 300 grand unless you live there. And for a lot of people, when they get into medical school, like you, they have to go where they get accepted, where the best opportunity is, and the student loans are exorbitant. And so if you're not making a great return, that's something that you better consider very strongly, or I'm going to call that bad debt. Absolutely. I, I don't think you should ever take out debt for your undergrad thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have proven that you can work while you go to school. 100%. You can do that for your undergrad, for your bachelor's degree. Now, if you're going into, like you said, you want to become a doctor, you want to become an attorney, you've finished your, your undergrad and you're ready to go into more specific, whatever you want to call that, you're working on your doctorate. Yes, at that point, I can kind of see taking out a student loan to actually become a doctor, but you should never that is a bad debt to take out a loan to work on your undergrad that may or may not lead you anywhere. That that's a bad debt. No question. So, you know, good debt in my mind, from a personal standpoint, a mortgage is probably okay. As long as you, you know, did your homework and didn't overpay for the home. And hopefully you're in an area where there's population growth and it's very likely that, that the value is going to continue to increase. You didn't buy a home on a busy street um, you know, just different things like that. And hopefully, instead of buying that really expensive home, hopefully your first homes are, you know, homes that could be rental properties, duplexes that you can earn money on and have cash, uh, cash flow and interest write-offs. Those are things that a lot of people make the mistake of, well, let me buy the expensive home instead of buying other homes that can become rental properties. And they'll win the real estate game a lot quicker doing that. But in terms of credit, I feel like it's okay if people are getting mortgages for real estate investments and their home that they live in. Car loans are okay as long as you're not getting 
crazy expensive cars and cars are getting more and more expensive by the day. Those are not the worst things because you're not paying that much in interest. But all the stuff where you take out loans for, you know, other things that don't earn you any money, we're going to have to call that bad debt. But if you take out loans or financing to build a business or to even invest in yourself and and I'm not talking about a $100,000 student loan, but hey, maybe there's a five or $10,000 training program to teach you how to launch a side hustle Amazon business or to, you know, learn how to build a finance business or whatever it is that, and you're learning from someone who's actually done it. Well, when was the last time one of your professors started a business and did it successfully? Oh, probably never. And yet they're going to teach you about how business works, right? Yeah. And, and Leo, case in point here, because the, the topic, right, is, is which of these things do we need to teach our kids? Because right. they're not going to learn in school. And I, thankfully had very, very sound advice as a child. Like my parents, I remember two instances. One, I really, really wanted this pocket bike. It was like a little bullet bike for kids. It was four or 500 bucks. And guess what? My parents were not contributing a cent. I had to save my money yes. and I had to go pay that in cash. On the other hand, there was an awesome aerator and I was, I was renting it and aerating lawns, renting it and aerating lawns and making good money but I went to my dad and said, hey, I really want to buy this. I can make way more money if I buy this, but I don't have the money. Will you give me a loan? And he actually broke it down, figured out a payback plan and everything. And my father was willing to loan me the money because it was a debt with an educated expectation of a greater return. So they wouldn't loan me the money for the pocket bike, but they would loan me the money for the Air Raider. I think that is a phenomenal lesson to yes. teach your children. I love it. I love it. No, and, I, and I've had uh, my, my two oldest boys have done uh, curb painting when they were, you know, both turned uh, 13 years old. And I bought them the, you know, the initial 100, 200 bucks of getting those supplies to go do curb painting and go door to door and learn sales skills and, and how to run a business. And they would each, you know, usually hire a friend, whether it's their younger brother or an actual friend to <laughs> come out and, and help them uh, do the business. And they both have learned great skills in doing that. Uh, my daughter just started her dance studio in our basement, and uh, that's another opportunity. She's still in high school. She's learning about sales, marketing, accounting, good debt, bad debt, you know, all those things that they don't teach us in school. So if you can teach them to, you know, grow a business, that's going to yeah. be, you know, very effective. Like give, so. give them real life examples of, of good debt and bad debt and let them, let your children fail. Right. I, I can tell you there was definitely times I went into the store trying to buy this and I didn't do my math correctly and I was short a few bucks. And my mom said, well, keep saving. We'll be back here again in a few weeks. And even though it's to your parents, nothing to throw a, cu a couple extra dollars on the table, but allowing your kids to fail so that they truly understand their money is going to help them learn and grow. Absolutely. And then in terms of credit, there's there's kind of two sides, right? If you don't educate your child about credit and they go out and take about a bunch of credit cards out to go on vacations and trips while they're in college and waste money and buy clothes and stuff, that's a problem. But at the same time, if you don't teach them to establish credit, then by the time it comes time to buy a house, they have no credit and they actually can't buy a house unless they have the cash to do it, which most of those kids are not going to have. And so you have to teach your kids how to establish credit, you know, not pay interest, keep credit card balances paid down, but use them smartly. You know, if you can teach them that, hey, if you can pay some bills with a credit card, you'll build credit. Now pay that off every month. Let's not pay any interest. Let's be disciplined with it. And then, you know, let's get a reasonable car with a reasonable car loan, start building some credit. So when the time comes to be able to invest in real estate, to be able to buy that first house, they actually have the credit to do it. And one of the saddest things you'll see is people who have not done that, or you'll see someone who went through a bankruptcy and never established credit afterwards, and they're not going to be able to qualify until they actually start building the credit again. You know what's interesting is they, they've actually proven that poor credit is generational. Like oh, yeah. you, you hand that down to your kids who hand it down to their kids. And so if you're watching this and you're one that you have bad credit, or you don't understand credit, you don't know how your credit works, you don't know what the different credit scores are, you don't know about the three different bureaus, you don't know the algorithms that create your score, then do your generations that will follow you a service right now and go take care of it because that is something that you will pass to your kids and they will pass to their kids. Like good credit is something that it, it takes work. It's not, like you said, it's not going to be taught to you in school. Maybe they'll tell you what, a credit score is, but they're not going to talk to you about 
what percent, right? Inquiries make up 10%. Utilization makes up 30%. They're not going to break that down. Go figure that out for yourselves and, and save a lot of frustration and pain and heartache for your generations to come. It's true. A lot of people think, oh, I made my, my payments on time. My credit score is perfect. And then you're like, well, that only makes up 35% of your credit. 30% of it is how you utilize credit cards and revolving credit. And if you can keep those balances you know, lower, then you're going to actually have a higher credit score. No one teaches us these things. And then it becomes this big shock and this big surprise you know, when it's time to actually qualify for something yeah. important like a house or hopefully even better, a rental property that's going to make you some cash flow. I hear this one all the time, Leo. Oh, I've got great credit and great history. I've been a, an authorized user on my wife's credit card oh, for 10 years. Yeah, that's and that's, that's it. Well, guess what? That doesn't work anymore. Credit changes. You have to constantly stay up on it. No question.